the town of Clun is regularly referred to as one of the most tranquil and picturesque places in England, however it is home to a remarkable fortification that dates back to the 11th century. Clun Castle sits high on a natural rocky mount in a loop of the river Clun, on the edge of the tiny and beautiful town. The castle's history is a rather interesting yet important one in protecting England from attacks from the Welsh. Although this castle was slighted during the English Civil War, when visiting, I was extremely intrigued by the remains, for the site of Clun Castle would have been huge and its intimidating and foreboding structure would have been enough to inspire the minds of attacking invaders to think twice about their actions. Join us today as we visit the remarkable history of Clun Castle while showing you around the site. To support the channel, please subscribe and to see more of England's greatest castles, check out some of our other videos on our channel. Before the Norman invasion of 1066, the manor of Clun was owned by Edric the Wild, an Anglo-Saxon magnate who would lead English resistance to the Normans. Clun Castle was originally established by Robert de Say, an early Norman baron who seized the territory from Edric. Here, Robert would build a large Motton Bailey castle, however his castle would have two baileys, which can still be seen today. During the reign of Henry I, the king would establish a new castle guard system at Clun, in response to a succession of Welsh attacks in the late 11th and early 12th century. Under this system, a group of knights took guardianship of the castle. Each knight had to conduct 40 days of military service each year, and the castle was regularly garrisoned. In 1155, the castle was passed to William Fitzalan by his marriage to Isabella de Say, and it would be owned by the Fitzalan family for the next 400 years. Under the Fitzalans, the castle would suffer a number of attacks, in 1196, Rhys the Prince of South Wales captured the castle and burned it down. In 1215, John Fitzalan joined the rebellion against King John, who then sent troops to attack the castle, and in 1233, Llewellyn of Wales would besiege the castle. Edward I's invasion of North Wales in the 1280s significantly reduced the threat of Welsh invasion and the need for strong military fortifications such as Clung Castle. Also, the Fitzalan family had acquired Arundale Castle by marriage in 1243, and their new castle proved to be a more favoured residence. By the 14th century, Clun had been transformed into a hunting lodge, complete with pleasure gardens and a large horse stud which was kept at the castle. Richard II made an attempt to break the power of the Arundale family in the area, removing Clun Castle from the Fitzalan family, with the execution of Richard Fitzalan in 1397. Clun was then given to the second Duke of York, Edward, with the intent that it becomes part of the Earldom of Cheshire. With the fall of Richard II, the Fitzalan family would return to favour. Thomas Fitzalan then played a key role in suppressing Owen Glendower's rising of 1400 to 1415, leading to a resurgence in Clun's interests. By the 16th century, the state of Clun Castle was looking rather dire, and it had fallen into quite a ruined nature. Philip Howard, the 20th Earl of Arundel, died in 1595, and James I gave Clung Castle to Henry Howard, the first Earl of Northampton. During the English Civil War, the castle saw no military action and was abandoned, however it was slighted by Parliament to prevent it from any possible use as a fortress. Today the site is open to the public, and it is managed by English Heritage. It is at this point in which we begin our tour and show you around the unique Clung Castle. The area surrounding Clun Castle is found situated next to the riverbank as you walk across the bridge. You can see in front a large mot which contains the first of the castle's enclosed baileys. During the medieval period, this area would have served as the first port of call for anyone entering the castle. Normally a guard position would be found in this area, allowing only esteemed guests and visitors with permission access into the further parts of the castle. You may have also found stables inside this area too. The first mot that you climb would have had the castle's outer bailey enclosed upon it. Upon this mot would have been a huge curtain wall which would have allowed the outer bailey to have more protection. Guests would have entered by passing a guard tower which would have been fitted with a portcullis. This would have allowed the castle to have greater safety should the invading Welsh armies be attacking Clun. On top of the outer bailey would have been many other buildings which were essential to the castle's upkeep and existence. Although nothing stands today of these buildings, you could have found here a castle farm, accommodation for the Lord's soldiers and servants, a bakehouse, a brew house, 
stables and also stores. These buildings would have provided food, drink and protection for the Lord, who would be staying inside the castles in a bailey in the keep. This area of the castle would have been teeming with activity and noise, with the workers willing to meet the needs and demands of the castle's owner. As Clunk Castle is extremely unique in the fact that it has two mots and baileys, there would have been a need for these to be linked together. For this, a stone bridge would have been made, which would have linked up the outer bailey to the inner bailey in the Great Tower. You can imagine that this bridge would have stood exactly where we are standing. You can also see part of the outer towers, which this bridge would have been linked up with. The inner bailey really is the heart of the castle. This was the most exclusive part of the castle, except for the great tower which housed the Lord's apartment. Inside this inner bailey would have been a great hall in which esteemed guests would have been dined in style. Elaborate decoration would have adorned the walls, great pomp and ceremony would have entertained the guests, whilst a banquet would be prepared. Houses for the Lord and his family would also be found in this area. These separate lodging areas to the great tower or the keep were used to accommodate esteemed guests as well. Also a chapel would have been found here, in which the Lord and his family could regularly attend services which would be spoken in Latin and led by a local priest. Clun's keep or great tower was an impressive purpose-built apartment block that displayed the importance and wealth of the Fitzalan family. It is likely that when Richard Fitzalan succeeded to the title of the Earl of Arundel in 1292, he added this tower as an extension to the castle to symbolise his new powerful position. This building provided luxury accommodation for important guests and was probably used when hunting parties stayed at the castle. It was designed to look like an old Norman keep to demonstrate the long ancestral history of the Fitzalans. The tower was built for show rather than defence, with its size and dramatic position on the side of the mot making it vulnerable to undermining. The arrow loops in the corner towers are also false. On the first floor would have been a communal hall in which great banquets and meals could be eaten with guests being entertained. Also above this room were small bed chambers in the far corners, but also a number of suites for guests to be entertained or to retire to following dinner in the hall. This tower would also have a basement floor, possibly for keeping wine and food cool, and also on the ground floor level would have been a reception room. When you visit a castle, much of the enjoyment and intrigue is by using your mind to help picture what the fortification would have looked like almost a thousand years ago. This is what is needed at Clun. If you stand in the footsteps of these soldiers garrisoned here, or the workers who worked in the outer bailey, you can really gain a sense of what this place would have looked like. It was a hugely colossal structure, and one that is linked to a family of great wealth and importance in medieval society, and also English history. When walking around Clun, if you do try to picture what the scale of this place would have been, imagine walking up the track to the castle's outer bailey, seeing the workers working in there. Then imagine walking across the bridge to gain access to the inner bailey, seeing a number of monumental buildings showing off the Fitzalan's wealth. Once you are here, cast your eyes up at the keep and imagine the scale that this building would have been and also the different rooms in here which would have been adorned with immense decoration. Clung Castle really is one of England's most unique, impressive, yet forgotten castles. Once again, thank you for watching The Untold Past. To support the channel, please subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.